So the way I have this set up is if I send a ground signal to pin number two, then it will play a song. That's just how the code is currently written. And right now I only have one song that's playable within the code contained in the SD card. So just to show you, if I send this signal a low, it will play an audio track. Testing for SD card. Pin 2 I just have set up as a, a check light. Oh, okay, so it was just a loose connection. Testing for SD card. Testing for SD card. Testing for SD card. Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. So the video you are watching now is a follow-up video to the first one I made. Once again, I'm not an expert. I'm someone who is still learning the basics of Arduino. I wanted to document some of the things I encountered while trying to understand the TMR PCM library for the sake of a project I am working on. I won't try and recap all of the details of my own project, otherwise I would just get lost in the details trying to explain it all. But there is an Arduino inside of this paging system that I created for my CB radio, and what it does is it goes up a channel and then it transmits and then it plays an audio file from the Arduino. Now currently there is only one audio file that gets played from this Arduino and I wanted to modify this so that I could cycle through a playlist of, of songs stored on an SD card. So I'm trying to upgrade the Arduino and SD card that's currently on my project. This project does not currently use an SD card, so I'd like to change that. Currently it just stores a PCM file on the Arduino. So here's what I'm currently experimenting with on my computer, and this is the pretty standard way of hooking up an SD card reader to the Arduino with some pretty standard code using the TMRPCM library, and forgive me because I won't try and cover all that information here. I actually did make an unlisted video where I'm just reading off of some Arduino reference material about the TMRPCM card, but I don't think people want to hear me reading that information aloud. So this is pretty standard as far as the setup and the pinouts for setting up an SD card reader. So I won't cover that, but I did add a few extra pins for the sake of my own project. Pin 5 is like a sensor pin, which will sense a high or a low. And pin 2 is just connected to a check light. You can see it's lit up. An LED with a 1K resistor just to also give some feedback as to the sensing of pin 5. Once again, this is for the purpose of making an audio file play in this bigger project. So that's why I'm having a sensor pin sensing a low signal. I suppose you could do it with a high signal, but I have done the sensor pin as a low signal, and it's using input pull-up resistors. Now here is some of the code that I've been using. 
and I won't try and pretend like I wrote this myself. Initially, I had looked at this video, and in a roundabout way somehow, which I don't even recall, I ended up on this Maxovsky blog for how to, as to playing, oh, I'll read it, how to play wave audio files with Arduino Uno and micro SD card. Then I scrolled down and took his code and copied and pasted it into my Arduino IDE. And so you are looking at it here. Although I've heavily edited that and I've changed a few things. And once again, I'm using this pin 5 as an input pin and it's using pull up resistors. So I needed some sample code to try and combine with the TMR PCM code which I got from this Maxovsky blog. So here is some example code that I pulled from a textbook on a basic sketch for using input pull-up resistors or input pull-up pins. So then I just took the applicable lines of code out of this sketch and I copied and pasted into my TMRPCM sketch. What stumped me is I guess I had to create a separate variable and give it a value through the use of digital read on the input pin. Without explaining too much, I forgot how to do that. So forgive me, I won't try to explain all the details of my code, but for he here, for example, you can see how I borrowed from that previous sketch using input pins, creating a variable called reading, and then taking the reading in the void loop. And this basically will give a variable a value of high or low. And if the reading is high, it'll write a separate check light high. If the reading is low, it'll write that pin low. But also, if it's low, then it will give a short delay, which is necessary for my project. Very, very brief. But then it actually just plays uh, an audio file that I have stored on my SD card. So it's a very simple sketch. If there's sensed a low, a logic low on pin 5, then uh, it gives it a reading variable and it gives it a value of low. And then because of that reading, then it sends a signal to play through the use of the TMR PCM library. It sends a signal or an instruction to play an audio file I have stored on my SD card. Now, the problem is that I don't just want to play the same audio file over and over and over again each time a low signal is received. So as you can see, this is modified now just a little bit. And I thought, how do I get the name of this audio file to change each time it goes through the void loop. And I thought about creating a, a while loop to do that. But anyway, this is really arriving at why I created this particular video. And I was trying to come up with a way to substitute a string in here that corresponded to the number of times it cycled through the loop. So I was going to do that by using a counter, which I called j, and I used static int because I wanted the value of j to be ignored every subsequent time it went through the loop, because that's my understanding of how static int works, and that's a separate discussion. And then I created a string called song, 
which I just called song. And then I created a string called counter as a string. Now, sorry, what this is doing is it's using it's using this operator to translate one variable type into another. Uh, the Arduino website example uses uh, ints and floats and so basically what's happening here is that this value, this float value 3.6 is being converted into an int value of 3. Now that's getting off topic but I wanted to use this cast operator to turn a counter, which is an int, into a string value. So that's what's happening here. String, and I even called it counter as a string. So j, which is an int, I want it as a string. So I created a new variable with an apt name, and I'm trying to convert it into a string. Then I created a new variable called song and number, and I'm using a technique which I understand is concatenation for reference sake. Paul McCorder had a video, lesson five, working with strings. In his video, around the 20 minute mark, he drops this idea, albeit briefly, on how to use concatenation while using strings. So I remembered this concept while I was creating my code, so I had to go back to this video for a reference as to how to do that. Anyway, that's what I've done here. So I created another third variable. Now I've created one called song. Now I've created a second one called counter as a string. Now I'm creating a third one called song and number. And what this string does, through the use of a technique called concatenation, I take the song, which is called song, and then I add the counter at the end, and then I add dot wave. So what this should do, I've used the paint program here to demonstrate this. So what I'm trying to do is create a new string variable and I'm concatenating. So I'm taking the string song and then I'm using the counter depending on how many times it has cycled through the void loop. Let's just say it's at the seventh time and then it also will add this dot wave to the end and hopefully through the use of quotation marks it'll assemble this new string called song and number. So now the Arduino program can tell the SD card, hey this is the song I want to play and it'll cycle through each time it goes through the loop it'll cycle through a new song kind of something like this. And just the way my code is set up, every time a low signal is sensed, then it will add one to the counter. Or more specifically, every time a low is sensed and then it plays the song, then it will add one to the counter thus cycling through the songs. At least this was my idea. Uh, as I found it doesn't actually work, but here's why I have created this video. I'll show you the following. Okay, so rather than speaking a whole lot, I'll just demonstrate. So I'll open the serial monitor and currently because no low signal has been received, it's stuck at song zero dot wave. I'll try and zoom in on this. Okay, so maybe through 
the use of delays in my code, I could have slowed this down. But anyway, you'll just have to take my word for it that off camera I'm taking pin 5 and I'm just touching it to the ground line to have an input of low. And doing that will advance the name of the track or song. So here we are again and I am taking uh, pin 5 and now I am going to touch it to ground. And it actually played another song. I don't, I don't know if you heard that. And I'll touch it again. Song 2. So every time I hit ground with pin 5, which is the sensor pin, it advances the name of the song. But the next thing I will explain is how this didn't work out successfully. If you are trying to read my code and figure it out, uh, I would recommend not doing that. It might be a little bit complicated and really only mean things to me, not you. But just as the basic concept of what I was trying to do, I created this third variable called song and number, and that of course is what's being printed on the serial monitor, like that. So song and number is this song zero dot wave. So therefore I thought if I copied and pasted this into the name of the file that had to be played, song and number, that my project would work no problem and it would cycle through playing all of the songs. But when I went to compile this, I'm hitting, I'm hitting verify. Uh, there was an error. There was a problem. The compiler didn't like this. So I thought, well, what if I just, I don't know, put it in quotes. Does that make any difference? Well, that just prints that exact string, so that doesn't work either. So I thought, what if I take serial print ln? I wonder if I did a serial dot read. <laughs> 